And we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. It's not by our works, it's not by our strength, but it's by the Spirit, said the Lord. And so we are going to look at Isaiah, and we want two verses out of the 43rd chapter, number 18 and 19. If you could recite that with me, amen. And then we will jump over to the... Acts of the Apostle. Chapter 2, 14 through 18, which will be our final reading. And it read together, if we can. Remember not the former things, neither consider things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall he not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Acts chapter 2, 14 through 18. And but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, all ye that dwell in the Jerusalem. Be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as he supposed. See, it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy the young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servant and on my handmaid I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Father, we thank you for this word. We pray your blessing upon it again. That it goes and bring faith to those who hear the word. Lord, we bombard every plot of the adversary. In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Amen. So we pray, God, right now that everything that come against your word will be defeated. And your word will take preeminence among us. Bless us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I will do a new thing. And your subtopic says, embrace the overflow. I will do a new thing. And I, I'm looking at this topic, a new thing. And I would say your life depends on it. Tell your neighbor that your life depends on this, the new thing. We remember the stories of how when we were given what you call an Old Testament and an Old Covenant or an Old Agreement that we weren't able to live by. No, sir. No, sir. Because we find that in that old agreement or that old covenant, you are buying to keep it to the letter. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord had to bring a new, new thing. Yeah. Such a neighbor that your, your life depends on it. Under the old covenant, you are given many laws, up to 613 laws. Amen. And even 10 out of it we can't keep. Praise the name of the Lord because when you offend one of the law, you have guilt with all the laws. But there is a new thing. Mm -hmm. And my life depends on it. And so it was when Saul, a man who become Paul, was preaching about the old thing. Praise the name. He was speaking about 
the law. And uh, through the law, you, you could not be saved except you are circumcised. Amen. Except you are circumcised. But I'm thanking God that the new thing mm -hmm, is different. Amen. Because circumcision in those days were of the flesh and outwardly. Praise the name of the Lord. But the new thing is dealing with the inwardly. All right, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. And so in the Old Testament, we have to do things according to works. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. And because of works, amen, Abraham was counted for righteousness, not because of grace, but because of his works. Amen. And so he did, amen, offer up his son to be sacrificed, and he became the father of faith. Amen. Because of works. And that was the old thing that was bringing in the new thing. Come on here. Amen. And so it was that Saul. Amen. He knows about the old thing. Amen. About the laws and the commandments. Amen. And he was pursuing those who had the new thing and did not know that the new thing that his life was dependent on it. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be doing the old thing, believing that you are on the right path. Amen. When you don't know that it's hard for you to kick against the new thing. And so it was in the old thing. Amen. They used to bring turtle doves and Amen. Bullocks and come on here, pigeons and, and offer them up as sacrifice in the old thing. But in the new thing, I'm seeing human bodies. Amen. In the new things, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice. I love the new thing. Tell your neighbor, I love the new thing because I don't have to bring any bullocks anymore. I don't have to put the blood on the door. Someone has taken the place of the Lamb Jesus, the great I Am. And in the old thing, amen, they had a horse and buggies. Praise the name of the Lord. You tell your neighbor, get rid of your camel because we're not riding them anymore. We have to be done away with the old thing in order to bring in the new thing. So it was when we went up to Mount Sinai, we had those limousine waiting for us. Amen. With humps on their back. Amen. But I didn't want to take that limousine because I'm used to the new thing. When I came on here, I saw cars and four wheels. That's what I'm used to. I don't see no chariots parking up in the parking lot with horses on it. Tell your neighbor, take your horse to the city and give the tourists a ride because we are in the new the new thing God is about to do a new thing somebody will realize that the new thing has already come but even though the new thing is here he does wonders every day that seems like it's new all over again he does new things every day because new are his mercies when we look at the mercies of God Amen. Morning uh, by morning. Uh, somebody said new. New mercies. Uh, I see uh, all that I need. Uh, thy hands uh, have provided uh, a great inside uh, of thy grace unto me today I'm looking at a new day amen God has made this day different from every other day it's a day we have never seen before and it's a day we will never see again 
again. But God is doing a new thing. Amen. When Saul realized what he was doing with the old thing. Amen. The Lord had to appear to him and bring him salvation. Hallelujah. God had to hit him off the horse. Bring him to his knee. I was preaching it the other night. Amen. When Paul was struck down. Hallelujah. Paul recognized the new thing right away. Even though he was practicing the old thing. Never heard that voice before. Never seen that light before. But when a light struck you, tell your neighbor I've been struck with a new thing. And something happened when I become struck. Something changed. I believe I got a mind change. I believe I got transformed by the renewing of my mind. I think after the light shine, transformation take place and drive out the old custom, drive out the old rituals. Some folks live off rituals. Of custom, but when God is doing a new thing, tell them to go along with the flow. If God is flowing in this direction, He's leading you to the overflow. Oh, I feel God in this place. Behold, I'm going to give you a new thing in Acts of the Apostle. Here comes the new thing. After we get rid of the old rituals, hallelujah, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are still holding on to tradition. Tell your neighbor, leave tradition and run for salvation. Leave tradition and receive salvation. Because tradition can't save you. But let me tell you to embrace the overflow. Because in the new thing, hallelujah, God said in the scripture, I will pour out, hallelujah, my spirit upon all flesh. Joel saw it. There was a pouring out, even though he did not experience it. But Joel said, I saw in my vision, hallelujah, I saw a new manifestation. It wasn't the burning bush manifestation. Oh no, hallelujah. It wasn't one of the theophanies of his manifestation. And I preached like a feeling, but I saw a pouring out. Something is pouring out in the last days. Pour it on flesh. I'm not talking about an overshadowing of what they had in the old covenant. Something was over them. Overshadowing them and prompting them to do things. Hallelujah. Under the leading of the Holy Ghost. But Joel said something better is on its way. Something greater. I saw a new thing. I saw the spirits of the Lord. Somebody 
Christ, it was upon me. Lord, you have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to set at liberty the broken hearted. Mend them up. Hallelujah. And to preach the acceptable. I saw Pentecost before it came. I saw it in the Old Testament. Let me dress back in the old. And God catapulted him into the new. I said, Look, said Joel, look, I shall do a new thing. Don't worry. I got more for the church. I got more for my people. It's not an overshadowing. It's not a written plate. I'm not writing on the outside. I'm not dealing with the outside. I got to get on the inside. Hallelujah. See what happened here. The Holy Ghost. That the outside have problems, and if I give you a written letter, you're not able to keep it. See, but he that keepeth Israel never slumber nor sleep. See, the Lord that is in you is a keeper. Your life depends. On the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, they'd show you in the lion's den. The lions would have eaten you up. If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, when they put you in the fire, Lord of mercy, you would have been consumed. Change because 
cause there will be an overflow. Tell your neighbor, we won't have room to put people in food because there is. Mm. Mm, the 
better praise. Put your praise in. I said, well, see, I'm going to bring you the word and what the word says. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Get me some water that I may drink. I said, well, I you come to this well and you have nothing to draw with I'm heading towards the overflow see Jesus will pick conversation with you to lead you to the overflow amen conversation like this amen you want this type of talk amen that is profitable because her life was dependent on this she said well you see uh, Jacob uh, our forefather built this well and this well is very deep uh, where God wants to go in the deep parts of your life uh, or some people have some stuff that are hiding in the deepest part of your mind and deep calling to deep because uh, I'm going into the deep uh, hallelujah because you are in the deep uh, there is no more hope for you but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. But they're not just sweetest strain would only lead on Jesus' name. You said it right. You ain't got no husband for the one that you're with is not even yours how did you know this nobody could tell you cause you are not a Samaritan and the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans how is it that you being a Jew ask of me a Samaritan for something to drink and tell me my business that nobody else they are over there and know my business how is it that you know my business he said well I got something more to offer you hallelujah before you were formed I knew you and I called you by your name and you are mine being a Samaritan I got an overflow for you you don't have to be a Jew I'm going to give it to you anyway because the Jews you see salvation they try to keep it for themselves but God is trying to break through all the boundaries trying to break through all the limitation take off the limit move the boundary take the fence away because we are moving over to the other side once the Gentiles need a new thing the Samaritans need a new thing the Jordanians need a new thing even though salvation is planted in Jerusalem this is where the seed is this is where it started but when the tree grew up the branch stretched over onto the other side and guess what all the fruits was bearing on the other side guess what the other side is a gentile side on the jew side only one and two got the bearing but the branch in the branch jesus said i am the branch eat of me cause your life depend on it there will be an overflow to receive a revelation that something was different about this man so she run into the city she left the old law she left the old tradition she left 
time is up. Bring it to him. Because he's about to do a miracle. Bring it to Jesus. Jesus said, hey, sit down. Let everybody sit down. Because I'm going to pray. Now, if you need an over, you know you have to pray. Some folks want to overflow and never been to the prayer meeting. Some folks want to overflow, never fasted. They only have a shake. They only have a tongue. But you need more than that. You need the anointing. Bring it to Jesus. He blessed it. Have them sit down. Let the disciples work. All the doubters, all the humans that try to resolve this problem, put them to work. Every time they swallow, there's more. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. And they said, everybody belch. Everybody burps. Everybody satisfied. Hallelujah. Since it's an overflow, something must leave over. After you get the Holy Ghost, something must leave over. A fragrance of the anointing must be following you. After you get the Holy Ghost, there is an overflow that when Peter walked by the shadow, that's an overflow. That when Elijah died and they threw the dead man in there, there was still an overflow. After you get the Holy Ghost, you must have an overflow. Even if you go inside the presence, listen to me. <coughs> we know in Jamaica, folks, when them have the weed <laughs> burning, it's so strong, they have to pass it around. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. You have to share it. You don't know, hear me. Tell the neighbor, pass it around. As soon as they light it, one draw, the place smell up. And you can smell it from a distance. Think so you can't come in a church after you're done, split it up and sit on like you could have spray all of the axe. Axe one, two, and three. And sit down, think so it's over. The smell of a wave is seep up back and overpower axe. Smell up the room. And you said, brother, you have a little sniff last night. I said, how you know? There is an overflow smell upon you. When you get the Holy Ghost, to that last night, last week, Lord of mercy, and you come to church and sit up, and the Holy Ghost start moving, and you try to hold it, and nobody don't know. Say you have the Holy Ghost, and you sit up, and your body start cricket. Hallelujah. And the overflow start kicking in. Somebody beside you recognize a shake it and say, hey, hey, hey. Even though you wasn't smoking 
no spliff. But just because you sit on this side, my God, some spell is so strong that even a partaker or a non partaker we get a smell. Just sit on beside your neighbor with the anointing. Sit on beside and something jumping in the other seats. It's an overflow from my seats. I need to stop right now. Hallelujah. Even though you're not smoking, but when you leave out of the car, the smell of it. The anointing is upon you when you have the Holy Ghost and something move, your hands fly off, your tie twists, your shoes move, something happen, bed slide, somebody running, hallelujah, there it is. You can't sit on an overflow. Shut up. Hallelujah. If you have the Holy Ghost sitting beside someone who don't have it. Woo. When God moves you, something is going to move. To the next person. I'm closing. I'm closing. But there must be an overflow. Don't be satisfied with what is in the cup. Because we are drinking from the salsa. Because we have experienced it. Listen to me, the salsa tastes good. The cocoa tastes good. Before the main meal. There's an overflow of an anointed in this house. We're going to ask you to stand everywhere. Stand everywhere. As we experience this move right about now. Somebody's carrying it. Somebody have it. This is your opportunity to bring it to the Lord. Somebody got to release what they have inside of them. Oh, I feel God. Somebody without the Holy Ghost. Lord have mercy. Can get an overflow. Right now. Right now. Right now.